Hey guys, what is up? This is the guest again, Gar, and today we are going to be looking at the new Pokemon Sun and Moon trailer that dropped today. Sorry for the late upload, um, <laughs> I actually tried recording this earlier, got halfway through the video, and then all of a sudden Expert crashed on me and I need to reset my computer because for some reason it just decided that it wouldn't want to open up again. So we're trying this again, uh, instead of having 50 tabs of each Pokemon open up, I'm just on Cerebi, I'm just gonna read uh, the descriptions and stuff from there. Since it's all just one easy page, so hopefully my CPU does not explode again. So let's start. So the first amazing evolution we're going to see is from type Null, and it evolves into Savali. Now Savali is all still normal type, it is the synthetic Pokemon. So far the only moves we've seen it learn is Multi-Attack, which is a move I think only he learns, uh, Crush Claw and Tri-Attack. Um, when Type Null gains a partner it trust, it deliberately destroys the restraining device it wears. Once released from that heavy mask, the Pokemon's speed increases substantially. Freed from the restraining effects of the mask, Volley's senses are heightened and it reverts to its natural temperament. Uh, it has a wild nature and it only obeys the trainers it touch, trusts. And to, and to protect the trainer from danger, it will put its own life on the line. Zavali is said to have been created to oppose a threat. Um, I believe this threat uh, rev actually refers to the Ultra Beasts, and maybe Team Skull created the uh, S Team Skull created Type Null to actually fight the Ultra Beasts. So maybe Team Skull is actually the good guys, and the whatever union is actually the bad guys. Um, that's just a theory for now. Um, uh, by inserting exclusive items into the drive on Savali's head, the RKS system, is, which is its ability, um, can be activated using Savali's somatic cells. It mutate and glow. The RKS, system, the RKS system enables it to change its type and cells glow with different colors of white depending on its type. So I'm guessing that Savali was actually made to be kind of like an Arceus, 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 however you want to pronounce it. Um, as you know, Arceus changes its type uh, depending on the plate that it's holding and as you can see that the RKS system that Savali has actually does the same thing. Um, so maybe someone thought that, you know, if the regular Pokemon that we had available to us couldn't take down the Ultra Beasts, why couldn't Arceus, or at least a man-made Arceus, do so? So, as you can see, the color schemes don't change that much. It's kind of like a pastel color. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, they're not going to go through all the typings here. And the next one, Jengmo'o evolves into Hakamu, Hakamo, Hakamo'o. And Hakamo is a f dragon fighting type, the first dragon fighting type ever to be released in the game. And we also get to see his evolution here, which is Kam Kam Kamo? Kamo? <laughs> well, either way, Hakamo is the scale Pokemon, um, and it has the abilities either bulletproof or soundproof, as you can see on the screen. The only moves we've seen him use are Headbutt, Dragon Tail, and Sky Uppercut, which we will see in a few minutes. Our seconds. Um, Jigmo'o evolves into Hakamo. It, break, uh, it breaks from its fellows and begins to live on its own and train by itself. Whenever it can, uh, whenever it can find Pokemon to battle against, it seems to appear. Hakamo dances before it shows its strength, clanging its scales together to make them ring out. When the dance reaches its climax, Hakamo bellows a fierce war cry to challenge its opponents. Its scales make fi uh, for fine armor. So Hakamo doesn't have to worry about self-defense, it makes multitudes of strikes out of overwhelms its opponents, but as a result the scales often become damaged and get torn off. They grow back immediately, so this is, does not cause Hakamo unique, uh, undue concern. In fact, it views a number of lost scales as proof of how for, uh, furiously it is fought, and it benefits from bared arms and bows of victory. Now what I thought would have been cool for like this ability, or for an ability that this thing had, Maybe for every time it gets hit, scales fall off and it causes maybe like kind of a, I don't know, maybe like a barb's ability, I don't know, maybe the scales somehow get lodged in the enemy somehow, who knows, and then Kamo, again, dragon fighting type, very cool, I'm probably going to be using these guys on my team. Uh, at the end of a harsh training, Hakamo evolves into its overwhelming powerful form, it returns to the land of birth where it watches over Jengmao from a distance. There is a legend to say that Kamo is covered in glittering scales in order to drive away from great darkness covering the world. The reason these Pokemon seek out the battle is the game power needed to defeat the darkness. 
When it, def uh, when it detects someone approaching, the Pokemon rings its scales on its tail to announce the presence. It has no desires to battle against weak Pokemon. Kama Kam <laughs> Kamo's uh, greatest move is Uppercut. It swings its arms up from below and punches its great skill and force, sending its foe flying into the sky and ringing its arms aloft. It can generate a force powerful enough to change its face or change the face of the surrounding landscape. So, I'm when I look at these guys, um, I didn't really get it from the Jingma O, but when I look at Hakamo, but mostly Kamo, um, I think of Aztecs. I don't know why, but I just. The scaling just looks kind of like the armor that we like see generally paired with Aztecs. Uh, I could be completely wrong with this. Um, I'm not a history major or anything, but I really like the look of these Pokemon, and the description is just really cool. Um, and since it is the only uh, dragon fighting type, I kind of wanted this on my team. Um, so basically, whenever I start a Pokemon game, before I like go in, uh, because we're getting a lot of news, and we've learned about a lot of Pokemon, and I think I already have the team I want for Sun and Moon. So this is definitely one of them. Uh, since I don't know if Litten is going to be f uh, fire fighting or fire dark, depending on which version I get, because again, uh, he shares the secret with... Rock rough, which means depending on what version he has, or which version he's in, depends on his, or changes his final evolution. Um, so I'm thinking maybe in Pokemon Sun it turns into fire fighting, and Pokemon Moon it turns into fire dark because of the whole extreme dark energy being excreted by Lunala. But if, that, if that's the case, I'll trade him over to my friend during his final stage, and I'll ask him to level him up once and make him evolve and send him back over. You know, just some usual. So. I want Hakimo just in case I do get the fire dark type, just so we have that fighting coverage, so we don't have to worry, so we have something to switch out to, you know? Um, the models in the game look amazing, to be honest, when I have these kind of like looks, it really makes me want these Pokemon even more. Um, to be honest, in Pokemon X and Y, a lot of the Pokemon designs didn't really like fancy my tastes, but just the way they look and the way that they look like Pokemon. I don't know why, but when I look at Klefki and I look at, like, um, Slurpuff and that one perfume Pokemon, I don't think Pokemon. I just think that they're weird and they just don't really belong. Um, so that was his move, uh, Clanging Scales. So, Bone Sweet, as we know, uh, is going to evolve into... Stini, but that's not the only one. We also get its third evolution, Discarnia? Tisrina? Alright, so Stini is a, gra a grass type Pokemon, known as the Fruit Pokemon. Um, its abilities, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, are Leaf Guard and Oblivious, and we only see it use Magical Leaf and Sleep Powder. Um, the Calyx on Stini's head, which I'm guessing is a little like stem. Uh, it's harder than Bone Sweet, so Stini is no longer worries about being. Oh, I'm guessing it's the leaves, being stabbed by other Pokemon. As Bone Sweet, this Pokemon may have preferred to run away from others, but now Stini and his other Pokemon can play together. Upon evolving, this Pokemon's fragrance becomes even more delectable, but it also gains the t uh, tomboy like personality. Uh, which, uh, that's pretty cool. Living together with one quite the ordeal as it moves around it spins its calyx swings nearby striking nearby objects but Stanley couldn't care less Stanley unleashes its combo moves using calyx on its head and his hard legs uh first it smacks the opponents with the calyx on its head and whenever the opponent flinches it lands a whacking break kick that usually does the trick um i usually don't go for the more feminine pokemon but again this is pretty cool i do like the final evolution um I don't know why legs for days, maybe, I don't know. Um, but it has a move, which I believe only it can learn, which is called Trop Kick. <laughs> I just realized the play on the words. Uh, but Trini has a high class nobility as Pokemon or human approach it with evil and most mind will be punished for with it. Um, it even turns its fearsome glare upon its own trainer if the two of them aren't fully in sync, or if the trainer orders you to use a move that will be ineffective. Other than the strongest and the Svani are able to evolve, with this, uh, when this happens, the Stini evolves into the blessing of other Styrania. Um, 
and then uses the strength to protect the bone sweet. The Trini is a high kicking vir uh, virtuoso with its horn skill, uh, hone skills. These skills beyond the level of its achievement, Stenia is attacked with graceful movement and has the same time as Fragrance Memories and the dealing secondary attack. Um, so first off right of that, as you can see it has the ability Queen's Majesty, which is completely new and basically this is going to be awesome for PvP because it completely blocks priority moves, which I am I'm 100% okay with because a lot of people I play with really ride those out. So let's move on to yeah. Let's, again, the models in this I, I don't I, again I really don't go for the more feminine like Pokemon just because I'm I don't. But I don't. It just it's weird because most of the female like feminine Pokemon that we have had like Lopunny and Gardevoir have kind of looked slutty, not gonna lie. And we have Ribombi. Um, it is the B-Fly Pokemon, weighs a good one pound. Um, I really like this evolution, I don't know why. It, it looks like it's wearing a little scarf, I don't know. Uh, Ribombi collects flower nectar and pollen and makes it into balls known as pollen puffs. It serves as food and, uh, and what's more, they also can cause effects like paralysis or dizziness. Ribani may use puffs to strike the opponents during battles. Some of the pollen puffs that Rumbombi makes also have relaxing effects can relieve tiredness. These are distributed around the Alola region as high priced supplements. Ribami has great rain uh, has, hates getting rained on, which I couldn't understand because it's a butterfly and if you don't know, butterflies have like scales or something on their wings and when they are bees. Well, most insects at all, when they f when they get when their wings get hit with water, they just kind of sog up and they can't fly whatsoever. Um, and they're covered in fluffy hairs that hold the pollen they've gathered, and the rain makes it wet and dirty. All women uh, people are known to Ribambi are busily visiting the fields of flowers. You can see used to feather weather or will continue. So, other than this, there really are no new Alolan Pokemon. So Ribombi looks pretty cool, not gonna lie. Um, it will, if I, will I use this on my team? Probably not. Um, I'm not a big fan of the fairy types. But as you can see, we have Alolan, Grimers, and Muck. Now, I will say this right now. Grimer and Muck, I don't know why, are my favorite poison types in general. Um, and them giving the color change and the new typing, it just makes it better. I'm, um, I'm Grimer's like weird jaw thing kind of looks weird to me. I don't know why, but I, don't, I really dig Muck. It looks horrifying to be honest. It looks like it has claws that could just tear into you and teeth that it's just going to devour someone with, and I love it. Um, so the Pokedex entry for Alolan and Grimer is when the population of the Alola region increases well not the Pokedex entry but like the description when the population of the Alola region increased dealing with their garbage becomes a serious problem as a solution Grimer were prompted uh, from other regions they fed primarily on garbage so, so their bodies positive change as so did their form uh, what appear to be teeth in this Pokemon or mouth are in fact residual toxins from the garbage it eats which have hardened and crystallized. No, uh, not, no method has been discovered to break down the crystals. Uh, direct contact with them is pre uh, direct contact with them presents a danger. Although my grimer is always eating garbage, but a constant hunger will cause it to begin eating other ma uh, manufactured objects. It runs out of garbage it will feed on. There is no more than a hundred Alolan Grimer in Alolan garbage processing plants, and all of them garbage produce in the Alolan region taken for use as their food. So that's pretty cool. Um, I was actually thinking maybe that they were from sea pollution or something. But now that it, like, that's even more terrifying, because imagine being bitten by an Alolan muck. Like, you would literally have crystallized toxins and poison and like decay going into your arm and it's amazing. The Alolan, the Alolan muck eats whatever it, it is in reach without pausing and it feels like sharp fangs of uh, sharp pangs of hunger. It runs a muck and thought it's reached vis uh, vicious appetite and stems from its inability to maintain its energy levels without constant influx of toxins. Toxins have accumulated in the Alolan muck's body from the steady diet of various 
waste products and malfunction materials the accumulation has brought about its chemical change producing a new kind of toxin. Alolan muck has the same poisonous crystals as the Alolian grimer, but they are not limited to its mouth. They extend from all over its surface and body. Alolan muck uses them to attack just like other Pokemon use their fangs or claws and the highly toxic crystals are easily knocked loose. Uh, making them extraordinarily dangerous. The Grimer and Muck in the Alolan region produce and store their toxins within their bodies. So unlike the Grimer, the Muck in other regions, you won't detect any unpleasant aroma when you take uh, when one's drawn near. So that's pretty cool because I know one of the main like hatreds of Grimer and Muck in the anime were that they just smelled horribly, horrible, <laughs> horribly. Um, so I'm wondering how Ash is going to react to these new forms of Pokemon that he has owned, or, like, Pokemon that he's had could have evolved into, like, uh, the Alolan Raichu kind of stuff, which is kind of weird that there's not an Alolan Pikachu. Um, other than that, I'm pretty sure that there's not much for the trailer. Um, as you can see, the color scheme for Alolan Grimer, uh, the Alolan Grimer just kind of stay stationary, but what I like about the Alolan Muck is that it just kinda, yeah, moves. And I know it's just an easy, simple effect, but I just love the Alolan Grimer in general. I can't wait to use it on our team. Um, the new trainers are mostly, I think, people that are going to be running the challenges that we know about. Um, so I don't know if these people are going to have, like, we don't really know much about what they're going to do. So far, we've... I think there's going to be eight trial captains. So maybe instead of facing gyms, we just face the trials and they give us a badge for that. Um, also, as you can see here, this is the forest that we saw in the first place. So that probably means that the first place that we're going to is going to be the trial of the normal type of person. So as you can see, that is the end of the trailer, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I can't wait to play the freaking demo that's coming out in four days. Um, I don't know if I'm going to record that because I don't really have a way other than to maybe use a phone or something to can't, like record the screen, but that's just fucking horrendous, and I don't really want to do that, and I can't get a capture card because they're way too fucking expensive, and apparently the Katsu Kitty capture cards that, people, that have been being sold have been faulty, so... There's not a win-win, and the only other person to buy them from is completely, like, not even consistent with how he releases them. So, if you like the news, please hit that like button, hit uh, comment down below what you're looking forward to Sun and Moon, what you think your team is going to be so far in Sun and Moon. Uh, I'd really like to know what you think, uh, what you want to be using as your team so far, or maybe what you're going to be using as your starter, or what you think that the other starter versions are going to be in separate versions, you know? And I hope you all have a great day, and until next time, bye bye